Hey guys, today we're going to make a low poly slingshot animation with Blender that looks something like this. So yeah, let's get into it. First up is the terrain, which involves adding a plane, and I personally scale it to 20. Then we can subdivide it in edit mode and add a displacement modifier. Then goes to texture properties, add a clouds texture, and set the displacement texture to this newly created one. Ideally, you won't need to change any of the other settings, but if you do, it would probably be the strength of the displacement modifier or the scale of the texture in the texture properties. Now, because we want this low poly, we can add the decimate modifier and make the ratio very small. Now, let's make the slingshot by adding a cube going into edit mode and merging to center, with hotkey being M. Now position it where you want your slingshot and create an outline of the slingshot by extruding upward and then out to the sides. Once you have your outline, add the skin modifier and in edit mode hit A to select the entire object, then hit command A to scale the size of the skin modifier. Now add a subdivision modifier to make it less cubed and then a remesh to get it back to the low poly look. Now add another cube and position it where the rubber band should go. If you're like me and rotated and moved your slingshot, then you may need to change the transform orientation from global to local. Now with the cube, delete all but one edge and reposition it. Then with the one edge, subdivide it at least nine times and add the skin modifier and again use command A to resize it with the entire thing selected. Now to wrap your rubber band around the slingshot, select the two edges, extrude outward, scale apart from each other, now just repeat the process until you get close enough to hit F and fill the edge. Now the modeling is done, and we can work on the animating part, which for the rubber band will be done with shape keys. First we need to set what we want the default position to be in order for this, we need to make sure that we use proportional editing. We don't want to move what's holding the rubber band to the slingshot, so to do this we can hide the two loops with H in edit mode. Then select the center vertex of the line and we can move it with proportional editing. Just scroll to increase how much the proportional editing affects it. Once you find the right spot, assign the first shape key. Then create another shape key, and with it selected, move the rubber band into another position where you would like it. Now you can see as we increase the value, it will move to that spot. Leave the value at 1 and make a new shape key by hitting the drop down arrow, and then a new shape from mix. Move it to another position and then set the shape key properties the relative to the shape key we just created before this. Now we can repeat those steps for as many as you think it needs for it to look good. Once we're done creating shape keys, we can animate these values. Really all you need to do with this is play around with the speed and make sure that when one shape key finishes being animated, the next one starts. If you want to try and make it a little less harsh between some of the transitions, you can go into the graph editor and play with the curves. Now all we have left is the ball, which you need to animate to follow the rubber band. And then once you get to the part where it should be leaving the rubber band, we can actually do a fun trick with Blender's physics simulation. All you need to do is add physics to the ball and check animated and keyframe it right before the last frame that you actually animated the ball on. The next frame over, you can uncheck animated and keyframe that. Now you might see that it doesn't really go that far, and that's to do with the fact that the scale isn't really realistic. So, to get around that, you can change the speed of the simulation and the velocity of the ball. Finally, you can add physics to the ground plane, change the shape to mesh, and set the type to passive, which will make the ball affected by the ground. Now you can bake the simulation, and we're good! 
If you want, you can now add basic textures. By the way, I got the textures on the terrain to be different by making sure that the modifiers would be able to be seen in edit mode. By that, I mean that you can actually select the faces, how they look, not how they are before the modifier. Then, with that enabled, I went to side view, hit shift Z for a wireframe view, and selected the top and made that a different color. Then I selected the bottom and made that a different color. The middle, I just left as gray. So there we have it. Now you have a slingshot animation. Hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.